Hey everyone, today I have a little study for you that I thought was kind of neat. Published in the journal Plus One, the study examines the fossilized tooth of a primate that lived some 12.5 million years ago. The primate is the Dryopithecus corinthiacus, which lived in Central Europe during the Middle Miocene. This particular Dryopithecus, it turns out, had giant tooth cavities. The researchers did a rundown on hominid metabolism at the time, as well as the contemporary ecology, food quality, and the availability of sugar. And what they found was that the Dryopithecus lived in a forested area that saw a seasonal production of fruits. It's just that this season of fruit production lasted almost the entire year, at least nine months, which means that the primate was almost perpetually exposed to a sugar-rich diet. The researchers think that the deep cavities in the primate's left molars were really painful, as there was also evidence that it had preferred chewing on the right side of its mouth. This is entirely what we would expect, as it's what we humans do when we have a toothache. You chew on the side where it doesn't hurt. It's the sugar that feeds bacteria in our mouths, and when the bacteria metabolize the sugar, they produce acids as byproducts. The acids break down our enamel and cause cavities and tooth decay. Cavities in humans are pretty common, especially in modern Western humans, whose diets are almost ridiculously stacked with sugars. And not good sugars from fruits, but mostly processed sugars loaded into breads and pastries and soft drinks and candies and virtually everything else. Our closest primate cousins actually don't get cavities that often simply because they're not eating nearly as much sugar. Something like 92% of adult humans have had at least one cavity, while less than 2% of chimpanzees in the wild have had a cavity. Chimps and other primates, like gorillas and orangutans, do eat a lot of fruit, but they can obviously only eat fruit when it becomes seasonally available. And for many primates, that season doesn't last 9 to 12 months. It's a lot shorter. When they're not eating fruit, chimps and other primates typically eat leafy vegetation, herbaceous plant shoots, and sometimes, especially in the cases of chimps and gorillas, they'll eat meat, typically from smaller creatures like a lemur who just happen to wander into the wrong tree. In the Dryopithecus, who is almost always surrounded by fruits, their fruit-heavy diet would have led to a disproportionate rate of tooth decay and cavity formation. The researchers think that this sugar-heavy diet allowed the Dryopithecus to fatten up for winter, and that this might have prompted hominids to lose an enzyme called uricase. Uric acid protects fatty acids from being degraded. The enzyme uricase will break down uric acid, so that those fatty acids can be degraded. The problem is that when the fatty acids are degraded, it's hard to incorporate them into your adipose tissue to use them for calories later. So hominids in European climates were pressured to lose the uricase enzyme so that they wouldn't break down their uric acid, so that this would preserve their fatty acids from being degraded. This, in turn, allowed the whole fatty acids to be incorporated into fatty tissue, which means the dryopithecus would be able to put on fat faster. If you live in an area with harsh winters, it's good when you can rapidly eat a lot of sugar and then rapidly put on a lot of fat, because then you have a pretty good chance of surviving through the brutal winter months.